This is video two of Aster Express series, and today we're going to cover an Aster 101. I think it's really important that we uh, understand what is Aster and how it works and what it's used for. So we're going to go through a simple explanation of Aster, we're going to go through a deep dive of Aster, and then we're going to show some use cases and what it's for. The Teradata Unified Data Architecture is really consisting of three components. One of those components is Aster, and Aster fits down here to the right in this server here. Up here, this box represents any data warehouse product. It could be Teradata, it could be Oracle, it could be SQL Server, any JDBC compliance system that has a SQL database. The difference between these environments is that my integrated data warehouse is something that's probably under tight service level agreements. People rely on a data warehouse every day for reporting and KPIs and dashboards. Down here, we needed a discovery platform where people could do more what if or kicking the tires or discovery, types of things that may not be guarded under a um, SLA or an ITIL process. You can change data quickly. You can move in new data sources quickly. And then over here to the left is the data platform. And that could be likened to Hadoop or one of our Teradata big data appliances. What this is, is basically an affordable place to land data. And then connecting all these environments together are a set of connectors that are through an InfiniBand network. And that allows for high speed data interchange between these infrastructures. Because let's face it, network IO is going to be your biggest bottleneck when it comes to big data and moving data around. All these different components of the UDA can be bought independently. So if I only want to have Aster, that's fine. If I want to have a, a Teradata EDW, that's fine too. Or my Hadoop side, I can buy them in any combination. So let's go ahead and let's go into a simple explanation of what is Aster. Aster is nothing more than a relational database. It's a relational database that has pre-built analytic functions. And what those two things mean is that because I'm a relational database, I'm going to be able to take advantage of something called ANSI SQL. ANSI SQL is just a structured query language that is very simple and what many people say is the language, the programming language of business. And because it's a simpler, more commoditizable type of language, I have more people that know it. The ability to find people that can do things with Aster is significantly reduced. And these pre-built analytic functions are based on the same premise or the same design concept of ANSI SQL. So if you're familiar with ANSI SQL, you're automatically going to be familiar with the analytical functions that come with Aster. These analytical functions do things like time series or pathing analytics. They do text analytics, statistical, clustering, and so forth. So it's really exciting. And what I think is really important is, is that Aster is nothing more than a collection of purpose-built nodes. You have queens, you have workers, you have loader nodes and export nodes, and you have backup and restore nodes. These, what these do is, is that the workers house the data, and the queens take the request, the query, and push that down to the workers, where they then perform the query and fulfill the query, send the data back up to the queen, and the queen then sends it back to the client. And then down here, of course, is a loading node or an export node, and that's basically for importing or exporting data out of Aster very easily. And then a backup and restore node does exactly what they do. It backs up the relational database. The neat thing about Aster is that you can get it in an appliance form, a cloud form, or you can get software only. That means that you're not restricted to um, one, one you know, to an, uh, an Aster appliance. You can go to the cloud. You can go with software only. Um, and then, of course, because uh, it, I think one of the big things that's missing in big data is security. And because it is a relational database, because there are things like grants, roles, permissions, and user IDs, I can easily set up a security construct that allows me to protect my most valuable data data about my customers or data, protected healthcare information or other regulatory data that might be sensitive, you must protect. So with that said, let's take a deeper dive into Aster. Aster can connect to Hadoop. It can connect to databases, Oracle, SQL Server. It can connect to a Teradata EDW. I can get data from any type of structure. If it's data, I can put it in Aster. If it's XML or JSON or an Apache log, I can easily absorb and manipulate that data and put it in Aster and get it ready for analytics. I think what's really critical is this SNAP framework to understand. And what the SNAP framework is, is basically a set of three things. It is analytical capabilities, a file store or, or a data store, and then a set of tools that allow you to be able to take advantage of all these things without having to jump around to different tools. What I mean by that is 
I can write a SQL query that is embedded inside of a subselect that is a map SQL map reduce query or a SQL or a SQL graph query and my interpreter automatically knows what to do with it it does you don't have to have a different client for graph a different client for statistics or pathing or text I don't have to have a different client for SQL they all work together through the snap framework against these data structures these data structures could be row stores or column stores and it could be the aster file system as well or it could be one of our connectors to one of our you know the Teradata EDW or the Hadoop infrastructure too so that's the snap framework with that said probably the most important thing about aster is the over 100 pre-built analytical functions basically four types you have the data acquisition modules that do exactly what you think they get data from a system it gets data from Teradata from Hadoop or from any relational database system it can even come in through a file system as well through files um, then I have my data preparation modules. These things allow me to do things such as data adapters and data transformations and whatnot. I can I have a, an XML parser. I have a JSON parser. I have an Apache log, log parser. And what else is neat is I can write my own SQL map reduce or my own functions and I can deploy them down into the infrastructure as I see fit. The other real value of Aster is this analytical modules. And this is where the graph analytics come into play. There's well over a hundred analytics to play with from time series and pathing to pattern matching and clustering canopy k-means minhash to text analytics where you can do text parsing and text chunking and text tagging and text classification and things such as naive bays and of course I have my statistical methods as well and then of course is the visualization modules which is right here and what we determined what we discovered with big data is that it requires a different kind of client your typical report is not going to be very valuable um, so we came up with a set of uh, different types of visualizations such as a flow visualization or what you would call a Sankey diagram which allows you to see the natural flow of a series of, of, of people's behaviors through a, through a system a hierarchy visualizer, visualizer, which is nothing more than a tree hierarchy, which shows a parent-child relationship between data objects. And then, of course, our affinity visualizer, which is a sigma diagram, which is nodes and edges and the strengths of relationships between objects. Okay. And then at the top here, we have our visualization or our tools area and the human aspect of who can use this. So this tool, this Aster is really valuable for the business. It's also very valuable for business analysts or, or you know, uh, reporting analysts. And then, of course, it's a tool for the data scientists. And you can use a variety of tools to be able to take advantage of Aster. Coming soon, we're going to have an R client where you can actually take advantage of R against an MPP or a very large data structure. Of course, you're going to be able to use our App Center and guided UI products and tools that are be coming out here fairly soon. Um, and then, of course, any SQL client that is JDBC or ODBC capable is going to be right there at home. Um, and then our, any business intelligence uh, tool will be very usable. Tableau, Cognos, MicroStrategy are going to be re useful right out of the box against Aster using a JDBC or ODBC driver. Finally, use cases. I think this is really important that we understand what do I use Aster for? And there's a variety. It's really limited, unlimited and it's, its only li real limitation is by your creativity and your imagination but omni-channel and customer behavior event analysis is really critical the ability to look at all the touch points of data of my ecosystem of my client experience so I can pull data together from an IVR system I can pull data in from a CRM system I can pull data from the web of my user experience what they're doing online and I can pull data from the brick and mortar stores as well as any kind of billing systems or whatever and I can pull that all together and I can run a common set of analytics against it quickly to be able to determine what are the paths and patterns of behaviors that are going on within my infrastructure I might do things like a next best offer I might do things like a churn prediction model um, you know or, or build a recommendation engine for my website the idea is is that I can really do anything I want with Aster um, that is within the limits of my own creativity and with that said that is Aster 101 and I hope you uh, enjoy Aster as much as I do thank you very much